Hey, what's up, guys? Today, I'll show you a horror anthology film, Necronomicon. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with a narration talking about the Necronomicon, the Book of Death. The narrator, Howard, learns that the book is in America and is guarded in a monastery by a group of monks. Howard decides to go get the Book of Death because he believes that it has the secrets of the universe written inside it. Howard is allowed to enter the monastery because he is a regular over there, and he asks his taxi driver to wait outside for him. Howard meets a bald monk named Baldy, who makes fun of Howard's writing by calling it simply fiction. Howard insists his work is worth a lot and requests to read Volume 3 of Famous Encyclopedia. While Baldy is busy looking for the book, he warns Howard not to sneak around. Howard promises not to be naughty, but he manages to steal a key to a cellar where the book is being kept. After some sneaking around, Howard enters the cellar but drops the key into the water after the doors suddenly shut behind him. A seal breaks open, and Howard finally locates the book. Now Howard sits down with the book and goes through the pages. He starts taking notes and comes across a story titled The Drowned. The story begins by mentioning Edward, who is a troubled descendant of a cursed family, coming back from Sweden to collect his estate and also to escape his own memories. Edward enters a giant hotel and learns from a pretty lady named Beauty that his uncle died 60 years ago. Beauty trips on her heels as she explains the history of the hotel, so Edward helps her. Beauty is attracted by Edward's magnetic field of hormones, but he shows no interest in her and continues looking around the hotel. Edward hears something weird, but Beauty says that it's the water from the sea. She tells Edward that he should try to sell a hotel as soon as possible, because the land will become useless very soon. However, Edward doesn't seem to be interested in her smelly bullshit and checks out a bedroom. There, he sees a painting of a beautiful woman. Dewey says that this woman is Edward's aunt, who died a tragic death at a young age in a shipwreck. She also says that his uncle died right after his aunt by apparently falling off the balcony. Edward is interested to hear this, so he inspects the balcony and thinks back to the memories of a fatal accident involving his own wife. Edward had lost control of his car and crashed it, thus causing his wife to drown. Edward couldn't bear to see his dead wife, so he walked away from the horrid sight. Now, Edward is told once more to consider selling the hotel, but he says goodbye to Beauty so that he can be alone. It starts to rain in the night, so Edward locks himself inside the mansion. He sits down and finds a sealed envelope left behind by his uncle. Edward reads it and learns that uncle lost his wife and son when his ship crashed on the shore. Uncle had survived the accident but could not bear to see his dead family after being revived by the doctors. Uncle cries and looks at the dead bodies with sadness, but eventually becomes furious. Fueled by anger and resentment, Uncle throws the Bible into the fire and orders everyone at the funeral to leave because he does not welcome any god who takes from him. Uncle then hugs his wife and tries to deal with his trauma. Later, a sea monster visits Uncle and says he's not alone in this time of need. He is confused by this and wants answers, but the sea monster walks away, although it does leave behind an English translation of the Necronomicon. Uncle reads the book and learns of a spell that he can use to bring his dead family back to life. Uncle cuts his hand and offers his blood as a sacrifice to cast dark magic. Uncle spills his blood on a demonic symbol and it lights up. As a result, his wife and son suddenly come back to life, so Uncle is happy at first. But then, they transform into sea monsters and attack Uncle with their GPS tentacles. Feeling down and out of hope, Uncle decides he cannot live with himself anymore and jumps off the balcony. Back to Edward, he wants to know more, but the letter gets over and he gets upset. He hears some noises and follows them to locate the demonic symbol his uncle left behind. Edward is curious, so he goes through all the books inside the hotel, but can't find the book. Feeling tired and dejected, he falls asleep, but then a tentacle monster appears while chanting that his beloved guards the Book of the Dead. Edward wakes up and understands the hint, so he checks out the portrait of his aunt. Edward manages to find a hole in the wall and pushes his hand through it. He finally locates the book and reads it so that he can also carry out the same spell that his uncle had cast all those years ago. Later, Edward hears some noises from outside and demands to know who it is. To his surprise, it is actually his dead wife who walks up to him without saying a word. Edward cannot believe his eyes and apologizes to his dead wife for causing the accident. However, she just wants to feel his hormones and she spreads her wet slime all over his body. Edward feels uncomfortable, so he pushes his dead wife away. She becomes upset and starts screaming loudly before transforming into a tentacle. Edward prepares himself as the sea monster completes her transformation and charges at him. Edward avoids her attacks and climbs up to the roof of the hotel. 
There, he drops the chandelier on the monster to subdue it. Now, Edward looks at the ocean and is happy to have survived, unlike his uncle. Back to Howard, he notices another story titled The Cold, so he starts reading it. A blind woman is visited by a reporter who wants to ask her about 40 people that were killed in the exact same manner, which was via the draining of their spinal fluid. Reporter mentions a scientist named Doctor who used to live in this house and is a person of interest in relation to the 40 murders. The blind woman allows Reporter to come inside the house so that he can learn more about her relation to Doctor. Reporter feels cold because of the cooling system in the house, so the blind woman explains that it's because of her skin condition. Reporter is given some coffee, and then he says he wants to know where Doctor is, otherwise he will incriminate the blind woman as a suspect in the 40 murders in a news article. She decides to give in to Reporter's demands and tells him a story about her mother, Emily. A flashback shows Emily renting a room in the house from her landlady. Emily learns that Doctor also stays in this house, but he does not like to be disturbed. She has no problem with it, so she goes for a shower. However, there seems to be someone spying on her hormones from outside. Emily suspects something fishy, so she steps out of the shower to check it out. She notices something on the ceiling, but she is suddenly interrupted by her stepdad, who acts creepy with her. Emily doesn't like how her stepdad is behaving with her, so she attacks him and tries to escape before he can hurt her sexy body. The stepdad recovers from the blow and catches up to Emily. He angrily beats Emily on the stairs, and she begs him to stop. Luckily, Doctor shows up and stops the stepdad by injecting him with ammonia. The stepdad falls off the stairs and dies in front of Emily. Now, Doctor helps Emily recover from her injuries. He reveals that the ammonia on the ceiling is because of him. Doctor explains that he has a strange skin condition, which is why he must live in a cold room. He asks Emily to take some pills from Landlady so that she can recover faster. However, Doctor also seems to be hiding something, as there is goo dropping from his forehead. Emily takes the pills and goes to sleep, but wakes up to lots of noise and ammonia. She checks in on Doctor and sees him with Landlady experimenting on her stepdad, seemingly extracting his spinal fluid. Emily faints from this sight, but wakes up in her own bed. She tells Doctor about it, so he says that it was just a dream and there's nothing to worry about. While sealing Emily's scar, Doctor accidentally cuts himself and drops some more goo on the floor. He doesn't want Emily to learn the truth about him, so he sends her away. Now Emily tries to become a waitress and is told by her boss to get a tip from some cops. However, she finds a file next to the cops, saying her stepdad was killed. Emily gets upset and confronts Doctor about it. He does not resist Emily and explains that he needed to kill her stepdad in order to take his spinal fluid and complete his research. Doctor says he would have killed the stepdad anyway because of what the stepdad was doing to Emily. He further says that Emily can call the police if she wants, but she says that she is only upset because he lied to her. Doctor starts dripping again and falls to the ground, so Emily takes him to an ice tub. Doctor recovers and holds Emily's hand to appreciate her help. He eventually decides to show her his copy of the Necronomicon. Doctor says there is a way to preserve life by using some chemicals that are mentioned in the book as the water bear. He also explains that his decreased body temperature allows him to cheat death. Emily wants to know more, so Doctor takes her to his greenhouse. He uses the water bear chemicals to make a dead rose alive again. The only trick is to make sure the rose doesn't come in contact with sunlight. Emily falls in love with Doctor and cannot control her hormones anymore, so the couple enjoys with each other, while Landlady jealously watches them from a distance. At night, Emily sees Doctor in a pod and is threatened by Landlady, who wants Emily to kill her because she also loves Doctor and cannot stand to see him with Emily. However, Emily refuses to take a life, so she runs away. Emily eventually has to come back to the house because she is pregnant with Doctor's baby. She is shocked to see Doctor and Landlady trying to kill her boss in order to extract his spinal fluid. Emily tries to save her boss, but Landlady kills him and orders Doctor to kill Emily. Doctor doesn't want to do it and accidentally burns himself after destroying some lab equipment. He cannot survive without fresh spinal fluid, so his body starts to disintegrate and he eventually dies. Landlady shoots Emily, but doesn't kill her after she reveals that she is pregnant with Doctor's child. Back to the present, reporter thinks something isn't right with the blind woman's story because several bodies have been drained of spinal fluid even after Doctor's death. Reporter accuses the blind girl of being Emily because she might have contracted Doctor's immortality disease after exchanging hormones with him. That's when she finally reveals that she isn't blind and she is indeed Emily. She says that her baby is still unborn because of Doctor's condition, but she wants to live long enough to see the child come out of her womb. Suddenly, Reporter falls to the ground and realizes that his coffee was drugged. That's when Landlady comes to make Reporter the next victim. Now Howard opens up another story about a criminal known as the Butcher. 
Two cops named Sarah and Paul chase the butcher, but they are having an awkward moment because Sarah is pregnant with the baby of her hormone partner, Paul. Paul asks her to cool down because she is being a rash driver, but she is very nervous. She eventually messes up and crashes the police car. Both the officers survive, but Paul seemingly gets dragged away by the butcher. Sarah pulls herself out of the car and radios for support, but only hears scrambling. She follows the blood trail to look for Paul and enters a warehouse where she can hear him gag dragged. Paul is being sent down a service lift, so she shoots at the buttons. However, she trips off a rope and is knocked out for a bit. Paul calls out to Sarah for help, but it is too late for him now. Sarah wakes up and gets surprised when the building's landlord shows up. She pins him down, thinking he is the criminal, but he says that he is innocent. The landlord says that the butcher is his tent and he can lead Sarah to him. Landlord takes her downstairs and they meet a blind woman who is supposedly landlord's wife. The blind woman is about to shoot Sarah, so landlord calms her down. While Sarah talks to the blind woman, she learns that landlord is not the blind woman's husband. Sarah is also told that the butcher is an alien who lived even before the dinosaurs. Landlord takes Sarah down to a chamber where there are odd-looking bat monsters. Sarah confronts Landlord about the Butcher being an alien, but he says that the Butcher works for aliens because he has no faith in God. Sarah gets frustrated with Landlord, but then the blind woman arrives and pushes Sarah down a pit after burning her. Now Sarah finds Paul, but he has become a zombie because the monster bats have eaten his brains in order to use the nutrition to reproduce. Sarah fights with Paul and eventually shoots him, but then he also turns into a bat monster. The other bat monsters savagely attack Sarah, and she eventually finds herself on a table. Landlord and the blind woman feed Sarah to the bat monsters while she struggles to free herself. The blind woman chops Sarah's hand off with her saw tongue, so it seems that the blind woman is the real butcher. Suddenly, Sarah wakes up in a hospital bed and is consoled by Landlord and the blind woman, who are supposedly her parents. She learns that she went through with an abortion, but then she sees Paul's body, and the blind woman shows that she has taken Sarah's baby. It turns out, Sarah is still at the same table, where the blind woman is chopping off her body parts, but she starts laughing, having accepted her fate. Now Howard is interrupted by Baldi, and is told to get out of the cellar, but he says he's dropped the keys. Baldi tells him to put the book back in place, but it's too late, as a sea monster awakens. Baldi is shown to be a monster too, as he pushes his head through the bars, and then he says that Howard will pay for his actions with his life. However, Howard pulls out his sword and stabs the sea monster. He then tears open Baldi's face to reveal his true form. After a brief struggle, Howard defeats Baldi and takes off with the book, even though he is warned by another monk. The movie ends with Howard driving away from the monastery with his taxi driver. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.